Praise the Lord, First Family. Oh, now come on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, this is 2023. This is the first day of the new year. And God has brought us all the way to 2023. So, whatever is going on out there, oh, uh, wait a minute now, compares to nothing that's going on in here. So, amen, praise God. All right, this is the first day of the new year. Can you believe that? Wow, on a Sunday, I was talking earlier to some, some brothers and sisters, and uh, I, I, think, I, I think the last time Sunday, New Year's Day, fell on a Sunday was like in 2017 or something like that. And it won't happen again until 11 years later, 2034. I'm doing public math now, so... Uh, but, but I think that would be 2034. Uh, but anyway, praise God. All right, we got a lot to cover here. Uh, and by the way, uh, my name is Sam Sanford. For those of you who might not know me, I'm one of the elders here. And uh, so it's a blessing that I get to deliver the message to you all today. All right, so the sermon title is Taste and Remember. Taste and Remember. And I want to say to our creative team back there, I appreciate everything that they're about to do to help me out. I apologize. I'm probably going to be all over the place. So you all, God bless you. I know you'll be able to keep up with me. All right. <laughs> all right. So Psalm 34, 8. Listen to this. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And we're going to come back to that. Our family goes home to Ohio for Christmas. And everybody cooks and bakes. And oh my goodness. I'm here to tell you, all those goodies, all those late night snacks, and around this time of year, if you all are like me, all I can think about is food. All I can think about is eating. And as a matter of fact, how many of us are still in the cooling down phase of our holiday eat-a-thon? Uh-huh, okay, <laughs> yeah, we're keeping it real, right? <laughs> you know, some of my favorite desserts this time of year are what we call those snickerdoodle cookies. You've had those snickerdoodle cook cookies, oatmeal cookies, and sweet potato pie. And if you're going to have cookies and pie, you got to have a big bowl of ice cream to go with it. And, and I don't mean one of those little dainty dishes of ice cream. I mean a big bowl. And by the way, who in here are my hardcore sweet potato pie people? I mean, who, who in here are connoisseurs of sweet potato pie? Okay, I thought there'd be more of us in here, but all right, well, this might not work out too well. For the few of us that are in here, we want to tell those of you that are in here that have a tendency to think that there's no difference between sweet potato pie and pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm, there we go. For those of you who think that, y'all need to repent. Okay? Sweet potato pie, pumpkin pie compares in no way to sweet potato pie. Y'all need to stop saying that. Okay? All right. So, when my wife Fazio cooks, whoo! I got to tell you, she prepares this meal. She takes a big pot and put in some green beans. And then she will sometimes put in some white potatoes. And then she will drop a couple of ham hocks in there. All right. And she cooks it nice 
and slow and oh my goodness the aroma that just wafts in the air and all I can think about is getting in that pot y'all know what a ham hock is guess southern people all right then all right all right so you got to put the hock in the pot right when you put the hock in that pot it gives those beans and potatoes a nice smoky ham flavor and that ham hock it's nice and tender and so you scoop up a big helping of those green beans put it on your plate right and then you put some of that ham hock on there and then on the side you get a big slice of cornbread <laughs> yeah we got some testifying going on we got a big slice of cornbread and sometimes we have black eyed peas to go with that and all I can say is one more again oh it's great right so with that let's go to the Lord in prayer our heavenly father wow we just thank you for bringing us here father in 2023 father for we know that it is only by your mercy your grace your power that we have arrived here and father as we engage in the message today we pray heavenly father that all of us will be blessed by your word Father, don't let it be about me or anybody else, for we just want to glorify you. We want to bring maximum honor and glory to your name. We thank you, Father, for bringing us here today. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So as I was saying, so there's just something about food this time of year. Everybody goes into the family vault and pull out all those secret recipes. And everything tastes just so good. And as I read earlier in Psalm 34, 8, let's revisit that. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Now, this taste in the Hebrew means to perceive to discern, to recognize, understand, to figure out, consider. Taste and see. See in the Hebrew is to have experience, gaze, take heed, low, look. Good in the Hebrew, listen to this, is beautiful, best, better, bountiful, Precious, cheerful, pleasant, sweet. Blessed here in the Hebrew is how happy. And from the Hebrew root to go forward, be honest, prosper. Refuge is trust, confide in hope. So if we were to put this all together in the Hebrew and read Psalm 34, 8 again, perhaps it might sound like this. Oh, take notice and experience that the Lord is good, beautiful, best, better, sweet. Discover the goodness of who he is relish in the sweetness of God and be nourished and flourished by it blessed is the man who takes refuge who trusts who hopes in the Lord now bless there's a promise here so in other words if you surrender and put your trust in God it will be all good for you. You will experience the goodness of God through his son, Jesus Christ. You will be given a new taste in the righteousness of God. 
You will no longer have a taste or a desire to feast upon the sin of this world. And you will reap all the good benefits of personally knowing the Lord. God's goodness is so sweet that in the worst of times you will be encouraged to put your trust in him. Psalm 119, 103 and following. How sweet are your words to my taste Sweeter than honey to my mouth through your precepts, in other words, your teachings, your guidelines, instruction, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So, believer, when you are drawn to God's table and regenerated through his son, Jesus Christ, you have tasted of the goodness of God and you are given a divine nature, you are transformed. Your divine nature, listen to this, your divine nature hungers and thirst after God's righteousness and the more you taste the more you experience and realize it's all good things it's the blessing and comforts of your relationship with a wonderful savior the more you want and God's meal is so sweet and satisfying that nothing else will do. 1 Peter 2, 1 and following. Listen to this. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now, I would be remiss at this point if I at least did not bring to your attention that your divine nature will always be in conflict with your sinful nature. A little homework. Go home and refresh your memory and read Romans 7, 18 through 25. Let's look at 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desire. The Lord's good, the Lord's good is holy, pure, the best. It is better, bountiful, and pleasant, and it is sweet. The Lord's good is infinitely better than anything anybody else can come up with. Believer, in 2023, God's goodness is still relevant. Believer, relish and delight 
in the goodness of God. Believer, keep tasting God's goodness and praising him for how good he is. Oh, the Lord is good, amen? Oh, the question has been asked. Can anything good, worthy, come out of Nazareth? Yes, indeed. Come and see. Come and see the Christ, the Son of the living God, God in flesh. He is the good shepherd. He never leaves nor forsakes his flock. God is a mighty good father. The persons of the Godhead are good. God is the architect of good. His word is good. He is good according to his promises. His gifts are good. The Lord is good to his church. God's design for your life is good. He has created good works for you. God is perfectly good. No evil can be found in him. God is immutably good. He is immensely good. He is immeasurably good. He is eternally good. The law of diminishing returns does not apply to the goodness of God. His goodness is not bound by laws of physics, thermodynamics, or entropy. God's goodness is eternally mature. It is always consistent. It is always constant. And it is always at full power. God's goodness isn't determined by who's in office. God's goodness isn't influenced by the federal budget or a continuing resolution. If for some reason that God needed to ask for goodness... With whom would he seek counsel? Where would he find it? You see, God is the author of goodness. God's goodness is who he is. It is fully matured in his character. God's goodness isn't borrowed, and it has no expiration date. There's no margin of inefficiency in God's goodness. God does not need a Six Sigma process improvement plan to increase the effectiveness of his goodness there's no variable in the goodness of God there's no calculator or algorithm capable of measuring the goodness of God he is mercifully good he is graciously good he is lovingly good God is sacrificially good God's discipline is good his discipline is not to destroy you but to make you more like his son Jesus Jesus Christ and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his promise you see God's judgment is good God's creation is good when God created mankind it was very good God is faithfully good his goodness can never be compromised his goodness is not for sale God is unapologetic good. God's goodness is pure and holy. God's goodness is glorious. He is transcendently good. His thoughts and ways are good. His healing is good. His counsel is good. And the Lord God, he is good. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. <laughs> Praise God. God is a good God. Amen. Getting warmed up now. <laughs> All right. 2023, praise God. Believer, as supernaturally wonderful as God's goodness is, remember, it's just a taste compared to the heavenly state of God's goodness just a taste God has more in store for you John 10:10. 10, 10, Jesus said the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy I have come that they might have life and have it to the full John 14 1 through 4 listen to the comforting words of Jesus 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know, I know my wife's cooking is good. You know how I know that? Because I have tasted it. I know for myself how good it is because I have been to my wife's table, tasted and partaken, eaten of the goodness she has prepared. I have experienced it for myself. Listen, I can invite you over to my house. Describe what she's cooking. You can smell it. You can look in the pot. But you are missing out on so much goodness, and you really won't know anything about it until you pull up a seat at the table, elbows up, and dig in to experience it for your Self. Amen. In order to experience the goodness of God, you must come to God's table and eat what He has prepared for you. You cannot taste the goodness of God from a distance. No matter how much anyone tells you about how good God is, in order for you to intimately know the goodness of God, you must personally experience him through his son Jesus Christ Romans 10 9 and following because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved for the scripture says everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord is Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved Now, if you are wondering about your relationship with the Lord on this New Year's Day 2023, please do not leave here today. Please do not leave here today without stopping by our next steps table in the foyer or without talking to one of our pastors, elders, deacons and staff and if you are listening remotely you can call the church office and talk to someone about your relationship with the Lord <clears throat> typically in a new year people have a tendency to reflect on the past and think about ways to improve the future now this is no surprise to you all the world is going to continue in a rebellious state of lawlessness as it has in the past years now if you think that's going to change it won't you see, the real problem with the world is not the White House, a political party, or any particular agenda. The problem with the world is sin. And only God has a solution for that. And his solution is his son, Jesus Christ. So believer, moving forward in 2023, 
3. I want to share some food for thought with you. I want to give you a few things to remember. What I'm about to share is by no means exhaustive. And if it were, if we were in Bible study, we could really do a deep dive. But in the interest of time, I believe that these seven things will help you maintain a biblical worldview as you meet the challenges of this new year. Number one, remember 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, this doesn't mean that life won't be hard at times. But we can rejoice in Jesus Christ about our relationship with him and the work of the cross. And that we are his ambassadors to represent him and make him famous. We can take lessons from the Apostle Paul. Listen to this. Even in our adversity, Romans 8, 28 tells us, for we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and following. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Believer, the same grace that was sufficient for the Apostle Paul is available and sufficient for us. At the end of the day, let our attitudes be as the Apostle Paul's in Philippians 1.21. He said, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 4.12-13 is an encouragement for us to be content in all circumstances through the strength of Christ. Listen to this. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Back to 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray continually. We should be engaged in prayer daily and often. It should be a way of life. We are commanded to pray, and prayer is a way of plugging into our power source, and that is God. James 5, 16 tells us, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer, listen to this, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Number two, remember to number your days. Psalm 90, 12 tells us, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. There is wisdom in actually reminding yourself 
that your days are few and that you could die at any moment. There is wisdom in asking yourself these questions. What will I do with my remaining days? And are my desires in the will of God? In my every moment of living, how do I bring maximum glory and honor to God? Do I display the love of Christ for others? Listen to James 4, 13 through 17. Come now. You who say tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Listen to this, don't miss this. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is a sin. Point number three. Out of these seven that we have, hang on. Point number three. Remember to whom you belong. Believer. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you are bought with the precious blood of Christ. You are to demonstrate your devotion to Christ inwardly as well as outwardly. You've heard the old adage, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? In other words, a child's behavior will more than likely reflect the values of his parents. So, believer, you belong to the I am that I am. You belong to Yahweh God, God the Father. You are a child of the Holy King. He is your Father, your Lord, and Savior. That means that your behavior should reflect the character of your Heavenly Father and what He teaches you. That means in all things, you are to be Look out now, a word we don't like. Submissive to the will of God. Point number four. Remember your identity. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Galatians 3, 26 and following. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. I wished we had more time to dig into all these points. Listen to here. Your race, your ethnicity, nationality, culture, gender, socioeconomic status, age or skills and abilities does not define you. Now don't get me wrong. Our diversity is a picture of heaven. But when that or anything else, don't miss this point, when that or anything else is put in front of Christ, 
and starts to define who we are, that is a Jesus plus philosophy, and that is not the identity of a Christ follower. If our focus is on our identity in Christ, and we yield and submit and surrender all else about ourselves to the Holy Spirit, I truly believe that all our individuality and our uniqueness will be put in its proper place to bring maximum glory and honor to God our Father. Point number five, remember not to eat junk food. That may be uh, rather prophetic for this time of year. Remember not to eat junk food. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work when it comes to God's word listen to this when it comes to God's word his menu is not a la carte his menu is not a salad bar you don't get to pick and choose what you want to eat and leave the rest God's word is good regardless of what you might think. We shouldn't come to our Father's table, look at the meal He has prepared for us, and push around the food on our plates that don't suit our taste. Pushing it around on your plate doesn't mean that it's going to disappear. You see, God's Word never changes to satisfy the whims of someone's palate. It also means that you don't add your own junk food or thoughts to somehow make his word more to your liking. It means that you preach the whole counsel of God no matter how uncomfortable it is, and even when, not if, even when it convicts you. You do not compromise or pervert the word of God. Hang in there, point six. Remember to have a servant's heart. Now, if you haven't discovered this so far, these seven points, and we're getting close to the end, these seven points that we have gone through might be stinging a little bit. Six, remember to have a servant's heart. Philippians 2, 3 through 5. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility... Watch out now. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Mm. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. The perfect picture of humility and the heart of a servant, of course, is Jesus, his life, and what he did on the cross. This reminds me of something I heard a pastor say. You know, we all claim to have a servant's heart, right? Everybody wants a servant's heart. Oh, I want a servant's heart, right? We quote John 13, 1 through 20 about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. We love that passage, don't we? We quote Matthew 20, 26 through 28. Listen to this. Not so with you instead, whoever wants to become great 
among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man, we love this, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, listen to this. Don't miss this point. If you think you have a servant's heart in 2023, if you think you have a servant's heart and you really would like to know, have someone treat you like a servant. Let that marinate for a minute. If you think you have a servant's heart, and you really would like to know, have someone treat you like a servant. Now, I am not talking about abuse, but if you are asked to do something, what is your motivation for doing it? Do you want credit for it? Do you see something that needs to be done and do it and move on? Or do you need to bring it up so that you get some sort of recognition? Are you submissive to doing what is best for the body of Christ? Or are you concerned about your own preferences? Answering these questions honestly is a great litmus test for checking the health of our humility in Christ seven the seventh point and finally remember to share remember the great commission Matthew 28 18 through 20 and we have this plastered throughout the church then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There you have seven points that we're only scratching the surface. I wish we had more time. You know, I'm a steak and potatoes kind of guy. And my father-in-law kept trying to get me to try this meal. It was a pork tenderloin with an apricot and honey glaze. And he kept trying to get me to try it. And when I finally tried it, I thought I would lose my mind. <laughs> oh, it was out of this world. It was good. When you have a good meal, you just can't stop talking about it. And you're always trying to get other people to try it. You see, God didn't save you for you to keep it to yourself. God didn't invite you to his table for you to taste his goodness Partake of his blessings, of his meal of forgiveness, so that you could get your get out of hell free card, jump in your lazy boy, and hit cruise control. That's not why God saved you. Not only are you as a believer to hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God, but also you are to be in love with Christ so much that you are excited to share the goodness of God, the love of Christ and the word of God so that people will want what you have tasted so much that they feel that they are missing out on a real good meal, all the goodness of God. And you know what? They are. And his name, of course, 
is Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray, Father, that in 2023, Father, that you will work in our lives in a mighty way. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are outside the safety of your salvation. Father, we pray that they will be drawn. Father, we pray that we will taste and remember. Father, we pray that those of us who know you will be great witnesses for you, Father, for those who don't know you. And Father, whoever might be in here today, we pray, Heavenly Father, that they will be drawn by you. Father, we pray that they will be drawn to taste the goodness that you have waiting for them through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for bringing us to 2023. Father, we pray that whatever we do in this year will bring maximum honor and glory to your holy and your righteous name. We pray these things in the most holy and the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.